Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the free MacBook memory card, but this is a complete kit with a 2.5 inch hard drive, two terabytes, and also with a network adapter. So with this kit, you don't need all, let's say you don't need to have like all the mumbo jumbo configuring this memory card, or you can just make it yourself, of course, but it is just ready to go for you. So inside this tiny box, we're going to get ourselves the hard drive. So let's do a quick look inside the box because this 2.5 inch drive has been set up so you can basically like add your games and be on your way so we're going to get a 2.5 inch drive and of course with the original playstation 2 fat we also have the option for a 3.5 inch but yeah that was more like let's take a close look at this 2 tier by 2.5 inch and let's see what we're going to get it's a sia gate to begin with so over here we're going to get sell the network adapter and this is a sata and the reason i'm saying sata because the original one didn't have a sata, SATA connection so that is one of the changes they made. Uh, the only downside to these things are is like there is no network functionality because you also have the basically the let's say the way to play through the network. But that's maybe something to talk about in a different video. But this thing is ready to go and it comes complete with the kit. So it's pretty damn awesome. So you can just plug in your hard drive and plug it into your PlayStation in combination with the Mac free booth. But there is something you need to know because yeah, if you're going to put it in here in your PlayStation fat, it's going to be like wiggling around. Recently I picked something up that is quite interesting that I also wanted to show you. It's not including this kit, you need to buy it separately and it is not cheap. But let's say you have an old school hard drive laying around from an old laptop, you can always like buy this one separately and then you can get yourself the hard drive adapter. So at first I thought this thing was made of metal, but nope, this thing is fully made of plastic. But it's such a very convenient thing because you can basically screw in this freaking hard drive like this. Just click it in. And I don't know if it's going to be included some freaking screws. It has been tightened very well, so if you don't have it, it's not going to be an issue. But I recommend doing these four screws that you go into need for putting it in the casing itself but also this also includes the freaking screws so we can basically tighten up the hard drive inside the case so that's a very convenient thing uh, we're going to get ourselves some extra paperwork but basically now we can just use it like this so there's another crazy way to go to if you just want to do it like this but let's like plug it into the fat model but first let's screw the hard drive into the freaking bracket because i think it's a more convenient thing that it doesn't wiggle around all right so i'm very glad to give you all of the screws sometimes it's always like the question are you going to get it or are you not going to get it all right so let's put in the nice black screws in here and tighten up the freaking hard drive inside and they'll be very gentle because if you tighten it up too much, you cannot get your other screw back in. All right, so that's the first one we're going to tighten up. That's the second one. All right, let's do number three and four, and we're ready to go. All right, so that's the way you do it. All right, don't tighten it up too much, and your hard drive has been assembled into the plastic bracket. Would be cool that this thing has not made of fully out of metal because it will give you some extra cooling but that's it well let's do it like this but i just want to point out if you're having an original network adapter and you just want to have the rg45 or ethernet connection and you just want to use the original one there is an option out there from bitfunx if i'm saying it correctly this is basically like a conversion kit that you're going to slap inside this network adapter and you can just convert it to sata so you can use the ethernet functionality but also have a sata so you can use like modern hard drives Okay guys, so the first PlayStation 1 model is still one of my favorites, not only because you can put a hard drive in it. But do take consideration there are a lot of different versions out there. And I think the first ones were like a freaking vacuum cleaner and do have like problems with the lasers because they were like the first launch models. Over here, here we can see like the model number. This is the 50004 and these are one of the better ones. Don't have like the vacuum cleaner sound in it and they have like better lasers. But that's not a poor, of course not the case really because we're going to take a close look over here at the extension bay because you can remove the plastic. All right, so let's fit in this plastic fantastic thing. Oh, the thing that I'm always doing is like putting it on the network adapter and then going to slide it in. 
And the reason why is quite simple, is because if you're going to do it the other way around, it's going to be always like quite challenging to connect it with a hard drive. All right. The only thing I've noticed with the fake, let's say, network adapters from AliExpress, it can be challenging to assemble the bolts over here. Be very gentle with it because you don't need to like tighten up too much, but it doesn't close always very well. So the next step we're going to do is double check if the hard drive is actually working and connected with the adapter itself. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is not assemble any memory cards, including the FreeMac booth. Let's plug it in. All right. And the next thing we're going to do is boot it up. And if everything works, it will automatically boot up the hard drive. So you know it's going to be connected. But okay guys, so when you're looking at the menu itself, it looks almost similar like the regular one, but of course we're going to get way more options now. To begin with, we're going to get the browser system configuration, the U-Launch Elf, is basically if you want to mess around with the eternal frowls. Then we're going to get the OPL that we're going to use for basically getting the games to load up. Then we're going to get HD loader, the launch disk, and we even got some extra like programs. Because of the size of the memory card, if you're going to get yourself a bigger size, especially when you're going to buy one ready to go, depending on what kind of version you're buying, and especially when I'm saying like the memory size will give you some more applications, I've noticed. So if you have set all of your games, you made ISO files or dropped it with the special program. So what you're going to see is you're going to get the loading of the OPL. The only downside I have noticed, if you're going to get yourself like a two terabyte disc and you're going to slap this thing full of information, it's going to be quite a long time that's going to be loading it up. And yeah, of course, if you just want to play in every, in every single hour in a game, it's not going to be a big of an issue. But the loading times, I have seen, let's say, shorter loading times with 750 gigabyte discs. But this is very long and I keep talking to show you basically how long it takes, it takes forever. And I'm going to cut the video. Because it, oh, hey, there it goes. Yeah! Woohoo! So what I personally love about OPL, that we do have the option to add a disk image, a cover image and a background, which you can see over here. So when you scroll through the game and you have activated every single, yeah, it will like load up the background and the picture. So it's pretty damn awesome. You have different layouts with some extra different options, but personally I really love this clean look. But when you're looking at the game settings when pressing triangle in your, let's say, game list, here we can set up every single game mode for a certain game. So some games don't have 100% compatibility and with the mode you can basically like switch it on and off so you have the option to play the certain game. But in the end, like there is a big list out there, the compatibility is so far, you know, the best with an internal hard drive. So you will need to do some tinkering for yourself when you're adding the games, but it's something you need to live with. But in the end, you only need to do it once. But when you're going to play from a hard disk, you're going to get way better, let's say faster loading times. And you will see it with some games, some you will do in really manner because the loading times are already very quickly when it comes to the disk itself. And of course, yeah, it's something that you need to take consideration that if you're having a game with a very long loading time, like the underground number two over here, sometimes you don't notice any, let's say, faster loading times. And it doesn't really utilize the faster speed of the hard drives of SATA due of the connection of the PlayStation 2, because the PlayStation 2 was basically intended to use with an IDA drives, and those have like way lower speeds. Okay, so next up, let's try some burnout. I just wanted to see how it runs because I did notice some issues when it comes to the MX4 SEO. So let's take a close look at some gameplay to see how it runs on the freaking normal hard drive that you can build in your machine.
satisfaction. Absolutely. Okay, so the bracket itself does an amazing job. So when you wiggle around with your PlayStation 2, you cannot hear the hard drive like or the piece of plastic bracket like basically bashing into the internal walls of the PlayStation. So the bracket itself works very well. So we can use this thing also for maybe an SSD in the future. So let's do a quick sliding out and unboxing. But the question remains is like, is this thing the ultimate solution? That is of course the question of today. The 2.5 inch hard drive works perfectly in combination with the bracket. Of course, again, you cannot just use it without the bracket, it will save you a couple of dollars. But you can just get yourself like a normal 3.5 inch hard disk. So they created a kit that you can basically pick up. And of course, I already did a video about the turbo, two terabyte version back in the day. But the question remains is like, which solution is the best one? I think if you have like an old school 2.5 inch drive laying around from an old laptop that doesn't get basically like died off. And you think, hey, let's slap this hard drive in it. I think it's a really cool solution. But in the end, it's absolutely like weird putting a small drive inside a big hard drive slot. Of course, you don't need the kit at all. You can make yourself a free MOOC booth. You can get yourself an old hard drive, a 2.5 or a 3.5, but the memory card is more like a convenient thing. You just plug it in and you're ready to go. But okay, guys, this is basically what we're going to get inside the 2.5 inch kit. And again, I need to point out for the people who skip maybe or didn't really understand it. This bracket, I bought it separately. You can buy it from all kinds of places. This thing was not very expensive, but I think it's a really convenient thing if you're going to use a 2.5 inch drive or an SSD in the future. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that bell, become a with family, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or you just let me know like your opinion about the hard drive kit. Would you consider picking it up or do you just grab yourself an old hard drive they have laying around? And it would be great to see you in the next video. Mm.